Diabetes mellitus. Diabetes mellitus is a non-communicable chronic disease which is defined by a permanent sugar excess in the blood. Two big types of diabetes exist, type 1 diabetes and type 2 diabetes. Type 1 diabetes is a result of low or inexistent insulin production. Insulin is a hormone that allows blood sugar to be transported towards muscles in order to produce energy. Type 1 diabetes can affect people of all ages, but mainly concerns children and teenagers. People who suffer from type 1 diabetes must inject insulin and control their blood sugar every day. If people with type 1 diabetes don't have access to insulin, they die. Type 2 diabetes, in which insulin production is normal, but insulin can't be used properly, affects older people who are often overweight. Diabetes is a non-curable disease. However, with a good diet, physical activity, and if necessary, insulin injections or medicines, diabetes can be perfectly controlled. But if it isn't controlled, it brings about complications such as amputation, blindness, or heart disease. Problems at the global level. A huge diabetes outbreak is presently occurring in the whole world. The World Health Organization points out that 135 million people were suffering from diabetes in 1995 and warns that the number of people worldwide who have diabetes will explode to 350 million in the year 2025. Diabetes is a silent killer which already kills 3.8 million people every year. Every 10 seconds a person dies from diabetes and in the meantime two people develop the disease. There are currently 6 million new patients every year. Diabetes is responsible for more than 1 million amputations every year, that is to say, a loss of leg every 10 seconds. Diabetes is also a major cause of blindness, a cause of loss of renal functions, and a cause of heart complications. In the next 20 years, diabetes will be one of the main worldwide causes of incapacity and death. Diabetes, a new challenge of public health in developing countries. Diabetes is no longer a disease only for developed countries or for rich people. In fact, developing countries will have to cope with 230 million patients in 2025. That is to say 76% of people with diabetes globally. In developing countries, this explosion of diabetes, as well as other chronic diseases, is directly linked to the huge emergence of overweight and obese persons, which exist both in rich and poor social classes. Diabetes Overweight and obesity are words which can seem amazing when related to Africa or developing countries. Nevertheless, these are daily realities of countries which experience a rapid and massive urbanisation, with, for example, an average growth of African cities of 10% a year, a growing sedentation of population, above all in urban environments, with a decrease in physical activity due to less physical jobs, short trips in motorcycles and cars, etc., Big changes in nutritional habits, called nutritional transition, which are defined by a steady alteration in diets and a large increase in consumption of high-fat foods, and also the addition of imported products, or Western products, to the traditional diet. Problems identified in Mali. Mali is one of the poorest countries in the world, and specialised doctors estimate that over 3% of the population has diabetes. The screenings carried out in 2005 and 2006 reported a diabetes incidence swinging between 5 and 16% of the population. A study carried out in 1996 at the National Hospital Point G in Bamako, Mali, showed that diabetes malignant was the second cause of hospitalisation after HIV AIDS and represented a large part of consultations in internal medicines regarding all specialities. Medicine, insulin and oral anti-diabetics. Shortages in insulin and oral anti-diabetics are recurrent and prices stay often disproportionate with patients' incomes. For example, in Mali, the gross domestic product in 2000 amounted to €310 Euros per annum, and the price for one insulin file for one patient cost €9. Euros. A year supply of insulin for a patient corresponded to about 38% of the yearly income for his family. Insulin alone is not sufficient. People with diabetes also need syringes in order to inject insulin. They need to regularly monitor their blood sugar levels, or glycemia, with blood glucose monitors or other different laboratory tests. 
Shortages in lab materials and reagents often occur and exist at all levels of the health pyramid. Thus, in Mali, it is estimated that a diabetic patient in Bamako, who does not present complications, spends on average €17.70 a month for diabetes care. This cost includes one glycemia test, eight syringes with an insulin vial or other oral antidiabetics, one medical consultation and travel costs in order to reach healthcare centres. All this given that the monthly wage amounts to around €50. Euros. Syringes and analysis materials must be associated with a health system including a trained and skilled staff and adapted structures. Health systems in sub-Saharan Africa are organised for treatment of non-chronic acute diseases. In Mali, a country with 12 million inhabitants, there were only two specialised doctors in diabetes care and only two or three health professionals who attended small training periods working in the capital. This specialised staff work within only three specialised departments for the whole country. The follow-up of the diet is a major part of diabetes treatment and as in many African countries, it is problematical. The setting up of an appropriate diet is a real issue because of the change in food access due to costs and availability according to seasons. Moreover, the lack of information of the medical staff on this issue prevented an appropriate education of patients and thus the compliance of these adapted diets. Social particularities are adding to these problems and increase these difficulties. Food intake within a big family, by hand, in a common dish, prevented the control of the ingested foods and the individualization of the patient in order to respect his or her diet. The isolation of the common dish was often undergone by the patient as a desocialization. Also, the prestige linked to overweight and obesity, which symbolizes a social achievement and is a sign of good health and prosperity, is an extra difficulty that doctors have to face. Developing countries have to cope with numerous health problems, and challenges linked to diabetes and chronic diseases are adding to them. In spite of the difficulties related to weak available human and financial resources, micro-projects like those implemented by the non-government organisation Santé Diabète Mali allow them to carry out the first actions in order to maximise diabetes prevention and care in those countries. In fact, at the end of 2006, thanks to actions by Santé Diabète Mali, Mali showed a significant improvement in diabetes prevention and care with, amongst other things, 12 referral doctors trained to obtain a decentralised diabetes care. 40 health workers on diabetes issues specifically equipped consultations with screening and analysis material in three regions of Mali. An availability of medicines with a cut by 10 in prices of oral anti-diabetics and a 48% price decrease for insulin and diabetes prevention actions that reached more than 55,000 people. At the African continental level, the scope of the diabetes plague and its major impact on health systems requires that Financial partners and international organisations recognise diabetes as a public health problem in developing countries and allocate proper resources in order to fight against it. The governments of developing countries should adopt policies regarding diabetes prevention and care and measures in order to shrink diabetes financial burdens. The private sector takes into account the issue of insulin cost, syringes, screening and follow-up material for poorest people. In this context, UN resolutions on diabetes, which passed on December 2006, is an opportunity to bring advocacy, which will allow mobilising all the actors of health systems, but also technical and financial partners, in order to improve diabetes prevention and care in developing countries.